Thank you for listening to English with Monty. For bonus episodes to test your English grammar, book a free 30-minute trial lesson, or to access our conversation group in London, go to linktree forward slash English with Monty. L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E forward slash English with Monty. Today, we're talking about the conversation group in London. Hello there and welcome to English with Monty. So we're on to episode number 54. We're going to talk about conversational English and my conversation group. And I have Gideon. Hi, Gideon. Oh, hi, John. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. Excellent stuff. <laughs> you expect me to say more, don't you? No, I'm just well, fine. You're just fine. Well, that's good to hear. I'm, I'm drinking water and speaking to you. Life can't get better than this. I know, yes, because drinking water and speaking to me is the pinnacle of everything, isn't it? It's a pity there's no video, otherwise you'd see the glee the on my face, having water and chatting with you. You're grinning like a Cheshire cat, aren't you? Mm, yes. What today, have you got for us today, John? Today we're going to talk about my conversation group and conversational English. And the reason why we're going to do that is because... Yesterday in my co-working space, we were talking about promoting my podcast and maybe I'm not shameless enough in terms of promoting what I do. Maybe a few people don't know what I do in London. I do promote it a little bit, but maybe I could promote it a bit more and also talk to people on the podcast about it and how it is and the advantages and aspects as to why people should come. Okay. You've been to my conversation group, haven't you? Yes, I have. By the way, I always thought you were pretty shameless, John. So, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. But perhaps I was just a little bit shy to talk about my group. Today is the day. Because you know what they say, if I am not for me, who will be for me? Indeed. That sounds a bit cryptic. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about my conversation group. And obviously you have attended it. You've probably been once or twice, maybe. Mm -hmm. First of all, what do you think? And what are your views on conversational English, practicing your conversation and doing it kind of in a group environment? Well, it's quite a casual environment, isn't it? I think what I liked about it is if you just come and meet up and chat, that's fine. But what you do in the group is... The conversation and the subjects are a bit more organized. You give topics and questions to talk about. You prepare something in advance. So we know what we're going to be talking about. So it's sort of like a guided conversation. And I think that's quite helpful, especially to sort of shy people who maybe don't want to jump into a conversation where they don't know what the topic is or where it's going. I thought that was really interesting. And mm -hmm. you have like teachers. Well, I was there. I was one of the teachers at that time yourself and uh, we sort of were there to like correct mistakes and guide the conversation so yeah it was it was really good and met, met some interesting people too there was quite a mix wasn't there i think when you were there yeah i think in each aspects. group there were like five or six people you like two groups you split into two groups and each one is about five or six well, that was okay to hold a conversation yeah i think maybe four to six something i guess the idea behind it is to try and give people a bit more Speaking times, often I try and look to put people in groups of maybe four to six, try my best to put people fairly similar levels. What's your feeling on that side of things in terms of the levels? I mean, I do try and make people have fairly similar levels, which I think is beneficial, but also we can be a little bit rigid with that type of thing. And if you are a lower level, sometimes it can help to some extent. Yeah, I think in my opinion is like that conversation classes are a little bit different with more structured grammar class things like that because in a conversation class you need a minimum level because a complete beginner probably wouldn't be suitable but once you reach b1 level then you can join in and because it's guided because there's somebody there to ask questions it works even though there's a, a bit of a mix of levels of course if you've got enough people you can have like different levels I think the group I was in was a bit mixed, mm -hmm. but I was there to help out those at a lower level, to ask them more questions and to get them involved. And I think it was quite productive. Well, but I think that's the key, isn't it? Just to get 
them a bit more involved if somebody comes along who is a slightly lower level to help them out a bit more. What I tend to do is have a whiteboard and I try not to interrupt people. It's more a case of just writing down potential corrections while they're speaking without interrupting really. And then at the end, showing it to them and so that people, if they have any comments or they want to Mm. delve deeper into what I've written, I think that can be quite useful because I think if you interrupt people within their flow, it's not always a good thing, is it necessarily? It's probably good, in my opinion, to hold back a little bit. Hold back a little bit, yeah. There comes a point where you're hitting the same error again and again, and you need to sort of jump in. Of course, each teacher is different. I was there to answer grammar questions. It wasn't a grammar class, but the, the fact that there's always a teacher around to guide and help out, I think that's important, yeah. That's why it works, I think. Chatting in the cafe, of course, it's useful. All, all uh, conversation is useful, but I think guide to conversations is the way to go. Well, at least in my experience, people seem to really enjoy it. And I guess that's the reason why mm. I try and provide different topics. So usually there's kind of three different topics and I rotate them every 20 minutes or so. And obviously the group, if they don't particularly find the topic interesting, they can reject it or tell me to change it sooner than the 20 minutes. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Like as long as they're speaking English, it's fine. But also if they're just speaking about personal things and it's not related to the topic that's also absolutely fine for me i think it definitely should be because obviously as long as you're speaking english that's all it's about really isn't it yeah i wholeheartedly agree also i should say that with the time i was there <laughs> doing this every time but afterwards after the group to we went to the pub so the conversation continued that was less guided <laughs> i should say <laughs> It was uh, less yeah. guided. It's always less guided yeah. down the pub. Yeah, yeah. A few of us will continue the conversation. I definitely know that people really enjoy that element because it's almost, it gives you the opportunity to meet other people that maybe you didn't meet within the group, but also it is yeah. a much more relaxed atmosphere in the sense yeah. that you've got a drink in your hand and it doesn't have to be an alcoholic drink. I welcome anybody to come to the pub as well who doesn't drink alcohol. I mean, I think sometimes people feel as if it's not the right thing to do, but yeah, I mean, that's totally fine as well. Basically be in an environment which is a social environment and mm-hmm. also as well, I suppose the place where we go to is the snapshot, isn't it really, of London, of the London social scene in the sense that going to a pub in Britain is a very cultural thing, isn't it? And also where we do go, it's quite a traditional pub. I wouldn't say it's particularly fancy, but that's kind of its charm, really. It does look like a house, doesn't it? To some extent and offers a good range of beers that are British as well, which I think is quite a nice thing to do so that people... Have you got shares in the pub, John? I have. (laughs) Okay. I haven't mentioned it though, have I? I haven't mentioned the name, yeah, so mentioned them. that, that would no, be foolish of me. No, I'm not, I'm not going to. But, <laughs> but I think what you should say is that wherever you are in the world, get on a plane, get to London, and turn up at John's conversation group. Is it Friday? On a Friday afternoon. Yeah, Friday at 5 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. at the moment. We were doing them on Wednesdays, and we are planning to start that again soon. Everything is on the meetup page. So it's meetup.com forward slash Monty dash English dash conversation. I'll put it in the notes as well. And really, if you can register through meetup, that's the best way of doing things. I guess we probably shouldn't tell everybody to come because why not? If we have everybody coming, then they might be disappointed because they might not be able to see me. (laughs) <laughs> I do know a few people listen to your podcast in France, in Paris. Oh, do they? Wow. So yeah, they do. If you come to London, a weekend from Paris, go there on a Friday. Yeah, start your week with John's conversation group. Yeah. Some English. Eat some, I don't know, chicken tikka masala, whatever people do it in London these days. Only Pickled that. eggs. Pickled fish eggs. and chips. <laughs> High mash. Uh, jelly deals. What? <laughs> <laughs> What do people eat now? Well, are they jelly deals? Do you have jelly deals in the pub? No. We've got scotch eggs. Yeah. You might have to explain a few of these things. People are listening. 
That's true. And they're thinking, really confusing them, because, oh, what's going on here? What are jellied eels? And I, I should say, well, London food is not very famous, food from London, you know, in other parts of the world. If you're from Naples, you might have pizza. Lots of French regions have their own delicacies. But what, if you're from the Black Forest, you might have a, a nice piece of gato. But what about if you're from London? Jelly, Jelly deals. deals. Jelly That's deals. what they eat all the day, every day, all day. <laughs> Jelly every deals. Day. Every day, all day. And pie and mash from the east That's end true. of London, really. That's isn't true. It? Yeah. Mm. Pie and mash, mm. yeah. And there are some good places to go, aren't there? What, for pie and mash? Yeah, and jelly deals. I, I don't eat jelly deals, no. I refuse. Neither do I. I've never actually tried them. Don't even know why we're talking about this. But um, <laughs> basically, if you're in Paris or in France, somewhere nearby, come for the weekend. Arrive on Eurostar two in the afternoon or something, you know, have a look around London, then come and visit us at five or at 6.30, have a few drinks, socialize, and then you've got the rest of the weekend to see the sights, meet the king, and, stuff yeah. like that. But what John has promised while we're off air, listeners, at is one. John has promised one time to broadcast live from his conversation group. Oh, my God. Has he? Do the podcast. <laughs> From the conversation group. Are you sure? Go around the table. Yes, that's what you said. Oh, really? Going to have to tell me how I can do that technically. Well, you need a Wi Fi connection and a microphone. That's true. You can go around the table and people can take you their opinions. That's actually a very good idea that you had. That I had and you haven't just mentioned. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. What elements of doing conversational English help? in terms of your language skills because one thing that i would come up with and a lot of people will tell me is it builds confidence and it makes them Mm -hmm. feel just a bit more relaxed about the language and i think or my concept is to make it a bit more relaxing and that's why we do it kind of in a bar cafe it's not in a formal school environment you can have coffee you can have a drink you can have something to eat if you want And you're not always going to be sitting next to the same people. I'm not there to be strict and write things on a board at the front of the classroom or anything like that. What is the advantage of doing conversational English other than boosting your confidence? What do you think? I think you already mentioned a lot of it. You're overcoming the fear, getting the practice in. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're not at a very high level, it's difficult to jump into a conversation. So as you said, it'll boost the confidence, you get your practice, you'll overcome the fear, you'll learn things, you'll learn vocabulary, you'll learn a bit of grammar, you'll listen as well. And you meet people, so that'll help too. Maybe you'll continue the conversations elsewhere. I think so. And also, I think it's a good opportunity to meet people from other nationalities. I would say that's the other thing that's great about London, isn't it? You're always going to get a nice mix of nationalities. From all over the place. Yeah. Do you remember what nationalities were on your table when you came? Yeah, there was a lady from Turkey, a lady from India. Mm -hmm. There was a guy as well. I forget where he was from. I think somewhere in the Middle East. I can't remember exactly. A few others too. Quite a lot of different nationalities. There are a few fans of you who come to the group as well. Oh, really? Yeah. (laughs) All right, they've been to one of my boxing matches. <laughs> Which one? Well- champion, North London. Welterweight. Yeah. Not heavyweight. No. The they bru- say, aren't you the bruiser? Are you the bruiser? <laughs> Gideon the bruiser. And yeah, I said, how do you know? No, please, no, no, I don't want that sword behind me now. I threw in the towel, literally yeah. and metaphorically. Indeed. You occasionally do the odd competition you know kind of special show don't you i mean yeah i don't know you did the rumble in the jungle or something like that didn't you <laughs> no that was muhammad ali wasn't me <laughs> oh wasn't joe you? Fraser. okay joe frazier <laughs> do I sorry again like you joe, missed that do i look like joe frazier no i'm not american i'm not black no that's true people can speak to gideon about his boxing career apparently i've only been to a few of your fights okay Coming on to your other career, you do other things, right? John, where is this leading to? What are you trying to say? I'm trying to promote you indirectly. What are you referring to? Tell me more. 
about Let Them Talk TV. Ah, oh, Let Them Talk TV. Yes. Yeah, when you say so. I have a YouTube channel. Make videos about the English language. It's played brilliant as well. Is it? Yeah. How many views has your latest video got? I don't know. A lot. Lots. A lot. I did one recently on idioms, Ooh. which are very old. Idioms that are a thousand years old. Oh, blimey. Seems to be quite popular, that one. Hmm. Some idioms that we use every day are very, very old. Can you give us an example? I don't know if I should, because then Just you won't one. want to watch the video. Okay, Just do you one. want. Uh, make no bones. I make no bones about it. Okay. What does that mean? So I make no bones. I mean, I'm not, I've done something wrong, but I'm not apologizing for it. That's how it is. So, okay. I was a bad boy. I was a bruiser. I hit people. I make no bones about that, but now I'm a changed man. Yeah. So you're not ashamed of what you did. Um... You're spelling it out. You're not apologizing. You're just telling everyone that that was how it was or how mm. it is. All right. Yes, I appeared on John's podcast. I make no bones about that, but don't hold it against me, please. What? I've seen the error of my ways. <laughs> I'm now a better man. You're still on it, though. You're still doing it. Oh, you can't yeah. get away from it. No, this was recorded in the past. Oh, yeah. Good point. You had a 100% record in boxing as well, didn't you? <laughs> exactly. They knocked Ooh. you out 100% of the time. No, I was thinking of another example, sorry. <laughs> yeah, very good. I think another example of make my no bones. Uh, even making videos, I sometimes make mistakes in the videos. Mm. And I make no bones about that. Everyone does that. Well, what can we do? Sometimes we make mistakes. Even us so-called experts make mistakes. But I make no bones about it and can still enjoy the videos. People should give you a positive comment when you make a mistake. They should be like, oh, <laughs> don't worry, give yeah, you that. 99% of cases when people write in the comments that it's a mistake, it's not a mistake. Oh, really? So I should say, yeah, it's usually wrong. But occasionally I realize, oh, no, why did I say that? That's not right. Sometimes they just don't recognize the mistakes at all, do they? <laughs> no, sometimes that's true. We won't go into that. If you're going to watch some YouTube videos, then definitely watch Gideon's on Let Them Talk TV. And yeah. Then... The one you should watch, so the, my new one, 11 common English idioms that have been using since the Middle Ages. Blimey. Long time. Yeah. It's fascinating stuff, really. If you're into history and learning English, it's fascinating stuff. That's what I like about your videos, though, because you do delve into those elements of history mm. and the origins of the language, which I, my thing. I, I like. <laughs> It is your thing. Yeah, no, it's an element of what you're doing, isn't it? And obviously you've done some other very good episodes on my podcast connected to those yeah. elements, haven't you? So, oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Yeah, we did one about the origins of the English language, didn't we? That was very interesting. And also, I think we should probably mention, just before we finish, we met through a conversational group, didn't we, originally? Oh, yeah, that's and true. That... Took a group from Paris to London. Mm, that's how we met, did. yeah. Because you got me involved, didn't you? And yeah, you had a, a group from Paris coming over to London, doing a bit of sightseeing. Mm -hmm. But as part of the trip, they did some conversational English, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Exactly. That was really interesting. People like that. I say people like it, but I don't continue it anymore. I'm not doing it anymore. Since Brexit and COVID, I don't bring those groups over from France anymore. It got too complicated, but it was good while it lasted. It was good while it lasted. And without having that... You wouldn't have had me involved, would you? We wouldn't. Have <laughs> yes, that's true. I and wouldn't be you, here today. You wouldn't be a millionaire from videos either, maybe. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, billionaire, you mean. Billionaire. Yeah, sorry. I didn't realize it's got to that many figures now. Thank you very much for joining me, Gideon. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Always a pleasure, John. Definitely. And hopefully that will inspire people to come along to my conversation group. We've got quite a few people coming at the moment. So it's a good place to socialize, good place to improve, and we'd love to see you. Thanks again. And you've been listening to English with Monty. Thanks for listening to English with Monty. For bonus episodes, sessions with the teacher, and discounts through our website, please sign up at 
patreon.com forward slash English with Monty. Or you can join us for our English conversation group in London at meetup.com forward slash Monty English conversation.